Hello lovelies, today we're going to take a look at Heart of the Saint by uh, Alucard Finch for Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Uh, this is a hardback book with a nice cloth cover weighing in at about 50 pages with a nice silvery inlay for the art and the same but slightly duller on the interior. Um, immediately, uh, I think I'm going to have to point out that it has white text on a dark red background. For some of you, I know that is uh, the end of your interest in this book. So <laughs> let's get that out of the way uh, at the front, even though I need the watch time. So, uh, excuses and... Uh, things you need to be made aware of when I'm reviewing stuff. Disclosures, that's the word I'm, I'm reaching for. Uh, this is Lamentation of the Flame Princess. I know Jim Raji, we're friends, he sent me this for free. Uh, when it comes to adventures, I don't normally particularly like to review adventures because it's difficult to review an adventure without giving away what it's about and spoiling the, the content and everything, so yeah there's that and also when it comes to adventures I don't tend to like them as much because they're one and done mostly so th there's not a lot of use in them maybe you can raid a few monsters maybe there's a couple of new spells I like there to be something more than just an adventure to go on um, when I buy material to play so but th those are my biases I'm just letting you know them up front in case it colours the way I talk about things, and these aren't things that bother you. Anyway, this is an adventure for Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Um, unlike a lot of official uh, Lamentations material, this is very much rooted in history um, and uh, a modicum of reality, which is the kind of thing that I prefer. The essence of the adventure is that this is a, a, a mini campaign, basically. A, a city is being plagued by spectres. Ghosts of all sorts are appearing throughout the, the, the settlement and harassing people, uh, goading them to do horrible, nasty shit, and so on. Now, you could play this a number of different ways. There is a random table of spooky elements, a, a D48 of all things. Um, so you, th th there's a mix. You could take it very, very seriously. You could take it in a very, very sinister sort of fashion. There are a few bits of media here and there, uh, and I'm not talking Ghostbusters, uh, which deal with sort of invasions of ghosts and the, and the things that they do and get up to and the effect they have on the society. So you can raid all of that fiction for ideas if you want. Um, in fact, the author pretty much says as much. Uh, at, at the beginning and talks about a few of their influences which are perhaps a little bit unusual uh, Jackie Chan Adventures was mentioned I, I, I believe um, so there's that but yeah, each of these entries is a plot hook some of them are a bit silly some of them are a bit weird or out of time or anachronistic um, like Charles Manson and the family turn up in in one of the encounters so whether you want to go along with what's here or not there's still quite a lot of material even if you want to take things more seriously that you can spin up into something um, better or more expansive if you prefer but if you prefer to go the weird odd or tongue-in-cheek route you know, the possibilities are open there as well so after you've encountered a bit of this yeah the the spectres and undead everywhere and the trouble that they're causing then you end up uh, running into a priest who is the guardian of an artifact, the heart of Saint Adolfo. And for reasons best known to himself, this priest seems to have decided that the best way to solve this ghost invasion is to bring together all the parts of Saint Adolfo and resurrect him so that he can banish the undead and, uh, well, do ghosts count as undead or are they fully dead? The unquiet dead, let's say, uh, to banish the unquiet dead, and yeah, away, away you go. Uh, things will be better, or so he seems to think. Uh, so this magical heart can sense other magical body parts, 
Uh, and so it beats ba-dum, 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 uh, faster when you're in proximity to them. And as such, that acts as your kind of adventure detector. And then there are a number of smaller scenarios throughout where you can find and pilfer and bring back various necromantic or magical body parts ostensibly belonging to the saint. Now, if you've got any knowledge of uh, European history whatsoever, you'll know that a great many of these alleged artefacts and relics uh, were not as advertised, shall we say, and that's part of the fun of the adventure here, is tracking down these relics and body parts, and are they really those of Saint Adolfo, or are they something else? And then what happens when you bring them all together to resurrect the saint? So there's a bunch of what amount to example ideas here and the consequences of bringing them all together and, and what happens next. But the beauty of this is, I think, that it is more of a structure um, that you can add to or remove from or change. You've got uh, an instigating incident. You've got some ideas of what you might do. You've got this artifact which helps as a prompt um, in, in various ways to lead your adventuring party, your mercenary company, whatever, from location to location to location, seeking these parts of the saint and running into trouble everywhere that they do so. So it's really good for that. Um, I'd have liked a little bit more reflection on what's happening in the city and what's happening with the ghosts there and what do you do if you've got an experienced party with magical weapons or spells that can just go around and destroy all the ghosts? <laughs> do we just keep having more ghosts pop up? Uh, what do we do there? So uh, th There's some on that. I'd have liked a bit more. I think you probably could have added another five to ten pages or, e or even doubled the size of this with some more mini-adventures for more body parts but you, know, you don't necessarily need it but this is a good basis uh, upon which to build um, it's a good way of semi railroading people into doing things that you want them to do so I mean you could take this and then you could take other short adventures and you could place parts of Saint Adolfo in other adventures and then use the heart or visions from God or, or whatever to prompt them into going and doing those other adventures. So if you have a smattering of disconnected oddball adventures, you can just add a part of St. Adolfo to them and that gives them the motivation to go and do it. So it's a product that also increases the value of the other adventures that you've got. And I prefer this grounded historical weirdness and horror that is present in Heart of the Saint far more <laughs> than I like uh, a lot of Lamentations, kind of over-the-top weirdness, uh, sort of sub venger level weirdness. Um, so this was much much more my cup of tea, or, or my beating heart. Um, so I, I don't want to say much more because I don't want to give it away. The, the little mini-adventures are nice, they're characterful, you've each got their own thing to them, uh, and the overarching concept is a, is a good one that I like uh, and like I say if you're a creative GM um, th th this is really useful it's a, an, a toolkit for bringing together disparate adventures and I like that about it um, so in terms of style uh, this is a very stylish product you may or may not like the whole art book art punk sort of uh, sort of thing this is certainly more readable and usable than something uh, like Morkborg is <laughs> Uh, despite the the white text on the on the red background and the and the silveriness, but that does give it a very distinct look. Um, I'm going to give it a four out of five for style. In terms of substance, it's a weird one because the substance isn't necessarily here per se, but it is this enabler. It's a catalyst for using other things, and the content that is here is good. So when you bring those two things together, um, I think that's going to be a, Despite the relative slimness and so on, it's edging a four for substance as well, just because of the sheer usefulness and the fact that it makes such a good grounding for a, a quasi-historical campaign. So then, four for style, four for substance, eight out of ten, four out of five. That, that's a recommend. 
if you're doing any sort of historically based or historically authentic um, OSR type gaming or even something else, you know, this adventure structure and everything would quite easily be translated into something like Warhammer and not be out of place at all there. Uh, that yeah, it's it's worth picking up, um, especially if you're into your old school gaming and lamentations and so on. But also if you just like grimdark role playing um, or or quasi historical role playing, then I think this is a this is a good bet for you. Zang. The world is full of terrible erotica, exacerbated by the existence of the internet and the low barrier to entry. And though it's not just men describing women in terms of how their boobies jiggle, now you too can churn out cringeworthy, barely literate erotic nonsense with Filthy Shades cliché. Two players, one the dom, one the sub, fill out bingo cards with awful, awful words and props and then try to fit them into their purple prose over several rounds of foreplay, sex and aftermath. Whoever scores the most by working their words into their florid gibberish wins. This game was knocked up in an afternoon, but it only cost 50 cents, so bite me. Available at DriveThruRPG and post-mort.com.